Now I are. Oh good, it wasn't me after all. You know, it's good to know when it's your issue and when it's, you know, something outside of yourself, right? You know, so. Good morning. I love that reading. It's a challenging reading, uh, as, as Damien acknowledged, to even just to sit and read it. But to, to be that person, to be that being that is a mind of light. Not trying to find the light, but to be, to live in to be an inhabitant of the light. And so that's what we're working for. That's what we're setting our intention, our consciousness, our awareness to be. This month I'm looking at what, are, what I'm calling the festivals of light that we have in our culture. Because humanity for all, all of, of time, as, you know, long, long before recorded time, has taken a look at this time of seeming growing darkness and remembered and called forth the light. And there's so many different festivals. Christmas is just one of those. You know, actually, you know, many of you know that Christ wasn't really born on December 25th. Or Jesus, the person, wasn't born on the 25th. He was born somewhere in the spring or summer. And about the 4th century AD, Constantine moved the, the celebration of his birthday onto December 25th because the Roman Empire was celebrating Saturnalia, which was their solstice celebration. And instead of one day, it got down to a week of, of orgy and revelry and was shutting down the whole empire. And so he had become a Christian and declared it the official religion and finally took this holiday and said, we're going to celebrate it on here to try and bring some sense of order and sacredness back to the thing. So I, I love these little signs that says Jesus is the reason for the season. I want to kind of go and change them and say Constantine is the reason for the season. <laughs> but before Constantine, before Jesus, light is really the reason for the season. So last week we looked at a festival of light as the, the, the celebration of Bodhi Day, the, the enlightenment of the Buddha. Uh, which was last Monday. This week, beginning at sundown on, on Tuesday, is uh, the Jewish celebration of Hanukkah. And it's, a, it's literally called the Festival of Lights. And so we're going to take a look at that and what that means to us on a metaphysical, on a spiritual basis, what that whole process looks like today. Next week, we'll take a look at the, the solstice, the winter solstice, the, which is probably the oldest uh, Earth-based celebration of light returning in the darkness. And then, of course, on Christmas Eve, we'll have a wonderful service where we'll look at the light of the Christ consciousness that comes to us and, and do that. So we're looking at festivals of light and what that means to us. You know, we say things like, life is good. And some people who don't understand what we're talking about say, no, but look at this and look at that. And what about this happening over here and all this stuff? When we're, when we're saying life is good, when we're saying God's life is perfect, we're not talking about a circumstance or event-based thing. We are talking about spiritual truth. We are talking about standing in something that we are allowing to manifest and to see and to bring forth, just like when we're watching the darkness grow, the days get shorter, we sit there and look and say, yes, but there is light. And that light will return, and that light will continue to shine. And so it is in this consciousness when we say that that we are starting to move towards that. That, that this is why we start to look at the festivals of, of light. This is why we look at this. This is why we stand in the spiritual truth despite the circumstances. So the mind of ignorance looks at the events and says, look at this, let me argue with that, not the truth, and gets wrapped up in that. The mind of light, the mind of truth, our spiritual center, looks at it and says, God is fully present right here, spirit is fully present right here, and I see the light. And I'm going to continue to look at that until it expands and takes over. Okay? So that is the consciousness that, that we are building. So that we can look at a circumstance and see the light, see the divine divinity in it, see our true self in it from our true nature. So we're building that muscle. This is a great time to do it. We get to play in the gym of the earth. So Hanukkah is the festival of lights. And 
if you don't know the Hanukkah story, and, and again, this, um, this is a story that may not be based in fact or is uh, somewhat based in fact, um, but has you know, some elements of it that may or may not be true, but it's a soul story. It's our story. It's the story of our soul. And so that's why I love this, this because it brings out truths for us. It brings out, it captures our imagination for something that we know is capital T true, even if it's not completely factual. Do you understand what I mean? Okay. So the story is that um, the, the Syrians, they were called the Seleucids, I believe, at that time, um, were, had, had taken over in, in Jerusalem, in, in Israel, had taken over the country. And um, as a rabbi friend of mine says, the shame that we, don't, we Jews don't talk about is we invited them in. We invite, they didn't come over and conquer us, we invited them in. There was, a, there was a little civil war going on between two factions of the Jews, the, the, uh, the purists, the, the pure traditionalists, and what were called the Hellenized, which is the, the um, Greece had been around, you know, taking, taking care of that. And, and, and Hellenized means that they were, they were working with kind of the Greek mythology and, and they were not true to the pure, you know, straight way. And so there's this civil war going on kind of between the two factions. And I look at that as the civil war that happens within ourselves between that which we know in our soul to be true and that which we do to survive on the outside and try and work that center, or that process out there. How many besides the Jews and me have ever been involved in, you know what's really true, but you're also trying to do the dance of out here in the world, right? And so we try and do things. We try and make things work out. We get those relationships or those jobs or do things for money that, that we know in our soul isn't good for us. You know, we invite those things in. And then, like the Jews, we've got to figure out how to get them out of there once they're there. So the, the Hellenized Jews had invited in the Syrians to help them. They, they had done what so many cultures have done and still do to this day. They invited the local superpower, you know, hey, you know, come in and, and help us to, to put these guys down. And like the local superpowers almost always do, they stayed. They kind of looked around, they said, well, if you guys don't know how to run your country, we'll run it for you, you know? And, and we'll charge you a little tax for doing that for you, and, and it's a nice economic profit and, and stuff like that. So that's where they were at. They'd taken the temple, the sacred temple, the heart of, of Judaism, the connection with God. And we each have a temple within ourselves, don't we? We each have our sacred temple. They'd taken the temple, they had erected a, a statue to Zeus, their god, in it. They were offering slaughtered pigs as part of the process for doing it. And you know how Jewish people feel about pigs. And, and you know, having statues of other gods, you know, false idols inside the temple and, and stuff like that. So it was a complete, um, in your face, uh, what they like to call abomination for them. And so that was the status of it. The temple was God's home. They had, they had de desecrated it. And finally, they said, enough of this. A priestly family named the Maccabees, who were of the, the traditional Jewish you know, path, finally said, we've had enough of this. And, and Judea Maccabee, who was the, kind of the, the leader of this process, uh, the, the last name literally means hammer. And his nickname was the Hammer of God. How would you like that for a nickname? You know, last week we had Buddha naming his kid the, the, the chain, the ball and chain, right? This guy is the hammer of God, okay? There's a little more power going there. And he decided to lead a revolt. He and his brothers led a revolt against the Syrians. Now, they were outnumbered massively, but they did guerrilla warfare, and they kept on going at it, and they kept on going at it until they finally said, you know what, this is not worth our trouble being here, and they pulled out. They were eventually going to come back, but literally on the way back, their, their emperor died at that point in time. They were having internal strife, and they pulled all the troops back to the empire. Okay, so they freed them. What the Maccabees knew is the same thing that we, we encounter in the Exodus story, is that they were fighting with God on their side. Ernest Holmes tells us that God plus one is a majority. Okay? And so they were fighting with that consciousness. They said, we know that the infinite presence, this, this God of our people, has never abandoned us, will not abandon us, and it stands with us even in this deepest, darkest hour. There's a wonderful prayer that's part of the, the um, Hanukkah ceremony that says, and, and one of the lines out of it is, you delivered the many into the hands of the few. You delivered this big army 
into the hands of the few. Now, normally they wouldn't be able to do that. But they stood in that consciousness, they stood in that faith, and they went after it, and they drove them out. And so they found, they got to the temple, they found it, of course, in, in the you know, terrible condition, and they cleaned it, they started to clean it out, and they wanted to relight the light that is the center of the temple, the light that is their connection with God, the remembrance of, of the one. And in order to light the light, you need, there was a sacred oil. It had to go through a, a, a koshering process to make it available. And they found that there was only one tub of the sacred oil left that had not been desecrated or the seal hadn't been broken or it hadn't, you know, something hadn't happened. And that was enough oil left to last for one day. But it took eight days to do the whole process of sanctifying and purifying the oil. And so most of us would sit there and be practical, wouldn't we? We'd say, well, let's wait for seven days and then we'll light the light. But not these guys. Remember, these guys have God on their side, right? They know that. They, they trust this. They're standing in their faith. They said, the heck with that. We're going to light this light now and see what happens. And the story, the miracle of Hanukkah is that the light lasted for the eight days that it took the process, that it kept on lighting and kept on being there for them. The oil in this story, the same as, as and, and some of you who know the Bible well, know that there's a wonderful story where Elijah helps a widow who says, I have nothing, I don't have enough left in my life to take care of myself, and he's and accepting for a, a little bottle of oil, olive oil up here. And he says, take that bottle of oil, get all the jugs from all your neighbors, and, ke- and start pouring it into the jugs, and you can sell it. And she keeps pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring and fills all the jugs of oil. The oil is our life. It's life energy. The metaphor here is, am I willing to take the amount of life energy, the amount of what I have right now, and start? It may not look like enough to get where I want to go, but am I willing to start? Am I willing to begin what I know in my soul is the right thing for me to do? Breathe with me. Am I willing to remember my mind of light? And even in the darkness, even in the circumstances that are around us, am I willing to stand in that consciousness and allow my light to shine, even though I don't think I have enough to make that light keep on shining all the time? Am I willing to move into that alignment with the divine? Am I willing to connect? And so with this this oil for a day, with this idea of not enoughness, They continue to allow spirit to support them in ways that seem unexpected. And we do that. How many of you have had spirit at some point in time, you've known that you've been supported in ways you did not expect? Logic told you it wasn't going to happen. Probably your friends, maybe your parents, maybe your kids, maybe your neighbors, told you it couldn't possibly happen, and it did. Okay, That's the sort of consciousness. That's the sort of, am I willing to step out on the skinny branch and go where I know that I need to go and do what I need to do and trust that infinite presence to show up. And so that's my invitation as we start to do that. That's the invitation of this Hanukkah miracle. The Hanukkah miracle wasn't something that happened a couple thousand years ago. The Hanukkah miracle continues to happen daily within us if we, if we open to it. Because this light of the divine, this life energy that we are, continues to flow and continues to light our, our way if we let it. So the question is, am I willing to let it? Anybody else? <laughs> All right. Am I willing to let that light my life? The menorah, the... the which represents the eight days, the eight candles um, that we have here. There's, a, there's an extra one that's here because the purpose of the lights, the purpose of these particular candles, it said, is not to light the house, but to light the soul. It's not to be used for practical lighting of the house. It's not something that you want to pick up and carry around to light your way through the house. But the top one is for that purpose. If you need a utilitarian light, You light the top one. And most Jewish families, as they do the ceremony, and what they do is they light a candle each day as as the eight days of the 
of the Hanukkah season passed, they light one extra candle. So the first day you only have one lit, the second day you've got two lit, and, and so on. Uh, and they use this center one to light as the light to light the candles. And so it's that central light that is within us that we use to remember the miracle that continues to expand and continues to grow in our lives every day. And of course there's prayers and there's ceremony that they, that they go through. There's, there's a ritual that they go through with that. And there's some good food too involved. See, this is not one of, this is actually, it's, it's interesting because Hanukkah was considered for a long time a minor Jewish holiday simply because there was no ban on working. You can work, you can go out and live your life. In fact, the, it's said that um, uh, Judas Maccabees, when he established this holiday after, after freeing the temple, said basically, don't deny yourself any pleasure. Go out and have fun. This is one of those holidays. You know, have a good time. And so it's, it's, it was considered a minor holiday, but it has grown in stature over time, and especially in North America and Israel with all the, you know, the Christmas stuff that happens usually right around the same time. You know, it's grown also to be a major Jewish holiday. But it's a beautiful holiday for that festival of light, that remembrance of the light, the remembrance that the light continues to light and burn no matter how long it takes if we're tuned into spirit. So this week, as we plot, contemplate that, I want to invite you to do three things. Number one is to be more aware of the light in your life, that capital L light. As you look around, be aware. As you look at the news, because the news can say darkness, 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 right? You notice? Okay. I, I had lunch with, with some friends of mine yesterday who were passing through the musicians from over in Eastern Oregon, and uh, they reminded me of a friend of theirs who had written a song called A Hundred Good Deeds. And the basis of the song was, on any given day, there's something that happens that may be terrible, but there's at least a hundred good deeds that are also happening on the same day. Which one do we want to focus on? The news media wants to, you know, get us to focus on the high drama one, right? But there's so much more happening. The light is fully present in our world, if we would see it. And so, the first step is to be aware of that light. Where do I see spirit operating within me? The second thing is to ask, where have I not been in touch? Where have I not been doing what is mine to do? Because it seems impossible. When did I start limiting the unlimited? There's an infinite presence that's absolutely unlimited in you and I and everyone around is an incarnation of that infinite presence. You're an unlimited being. Did you know that? When did you start limiting the unlimited? And are we willing to start to open that up a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more? So where is it in my life? that I'm not doing what I know is mine to do because it seems impossible or because it seems it's not the right time. It's Christmas. You know, I'll do it after Christmas. It's, it's, you know, I'll do it when I lose weight. I'll do it when I... When are we going to start doing it now? That's the Maccabees. The Maccabees were, were I, in, in my opinion, Nike kind of guys, right? Just do it. You know, we got these Syrians in here. We want them out of here. Just do it. We want the temple cleaned, just do it. We want the light, just do it. We want the light to last for eight days, just start it. Okay? And so sometimes it's really good to have that attitude. Just go for it, I'm going to do this. And then third, be willing to let spirit work through you. Be willing to have spirit working through you. Be willing to be an open conduit for this light, for this power for this olive oil, for this, this sacred oil that you are, that is passing through you. Each of us is that. We are, I believe it's um, Hafiz who said, I'm a hollow flute, a hollow reed through which the, the universe plays its tune as a flute. Are we willing to open up and be that and let the universe play its tune through us? Or do we keep our holes closed, our openings closed? So are you willing to let spirit work through you this week? Thank you.
Anybody else? Yes. Oh, good. You know, I don't mind you talking to me, by the way. Have you figured that out yet? <laughs> it's okay. During the Hanukkah ceremony uh, each night, there's, a, there's a, two prayers. There's, the first night, there's a set of three prayers that are, that are spoken. And the, second, and the rest of the week, there's a set of uh, two prayers that are spoken. And they all begin with this wonderful line. And this is, I'm going to um, attempt it in Hebrew. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu. And what it means is, blessed are you, Lord God, our King, ruler of the universe. We have that within us. There's a wonderful song that I, I, I used to listen to called, My God is an Awesome God. And, and if you get a good gospel group singing it or a good choir singing it, it, it builds. My God is an awesome God. It reigns through the universe. Okay? Our God is an awesome God. But our God is not sitting on a throne somewhere up there. Our God lives, moves, breathes as us, exists and expresses as us. We're it in form. We're not all of it, but we are it in form. Poke that person next to you or, or look, at the, you know, look at the person that's sitting in your chair and tell them, you're it. Okay? You're it. You are God, the King, the ruler of the universe. That is who the, tr the truth of who you are. Okay? Do you let that life here light your life? I'm willing to let that light my life. Are you willing to let it light your life? Yes. Yeah. So that's my invitation this week. That's my invitation during this Hanukkah season. Is that you allow that to light you up <laughs> like a Hanukkah menorah, like a Christmas tree, like whatever metaphor you want to give it, a Yule log, to light you up in the most beautiful, positive, powerful way, that you then stand and shine that light. You are that light, and you get to be that light. You are the candle of the divine. Allow yourself to be lit and to shine forth. Are you willing to do that this week? Yeah. Let's play. So let's move into prayer. I know that there is one infinite presence. Lord God, King of the universe, ruler of the universe, or whatever other name we give it. That infinite presence that is right here, right now, and everywhere present, the only thing that there is in this universe is that infinite one, that light, that love, that life energy. And we are that. Because it is all that there is, we can't be outside of it. There's nothing else but that infinite presence. And so we have to be one of that infinite presence. It's the only thing that, this, that works. It's the truth of our being. I and each person who hears the sound of this word and everybody who never hears the sound of this word still is one of this infinite presence. All of it is one of this infinite presence. And so I speak my word that we who hear this, we who know this, Allow that light to shine through us. We stop playing small. We stop looking for the reasons why we can't. And open up to the possibility of why we can. We simply allow ourselves to be lit up by the infinite. And we trust that process. We say yes to the divine within us. We look at where in our lives we need more light. And we say, I'm lighting the candle there. I'm letting spirit do the rest through and as me. And so during this beautiful time of sacred celebration of light, we remember this truth. No matter how dark it may seem outside, the light is always on. The light is fully present. The light is living itself in through and as us. We are the mind of light in form. And so in great gratitude for all the brilliance that comes out of this process, in great gratitude for the brilliance of each person here, I give great thanks. 
And so I release this word into a law that knowing that it is already being manifested, it is already being made so, that this light is going on throughout this world. This light is being seen throughout this world. And together we say, and so it is. Thank you. Soon.